This is a lesson for Chapter 3, Section 7, Absolute Value Equations and Inequalities. And we're just going to be dealing with the equations today. That's day one. Day two, we'll deal with inequalities. So the directions are going to say solve each equation. If there is no solution, write no solution. So let's talk about what to do. Well, first of all, absolute value. That's just the distance, distance from a number. It doesn't matter where it is, from a number to zero. And that's all it is. And so remember when we dealt with absolute value when we first learned about it, we saw things like this. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. Well, why is it 3? Well, because it's asking about the distance between negative 3 and 0 on a number line. And we saw that the absolute value of positive 3 was also 3. It's not negative 3, it's positive 3. Because why? Well, the distance from 3 to 0 is just 3 spaces on the number line. And so that's what we're going to be dealing with here. But the difference is now we're trying to find a value of c that makes this absolute value equal to 15. Well, there's two numbers that could be 15 to make 15. And that's either c plus 3 equal to 15, but we could also set that equal to negative 15 because, again, the absolute value of negative 15 is going to be 15, and the absolute value of positive 15 is going to be 15. So we just take the expression that we have inside the absolute value bars, and we set it equal to those two numbers. And then we solve from there. So we're just doing opposite operations to figure out what those two values of c would be. So we have to take the uh, subtract 3 from both the positive 15 and the negative 15. So when we do that, we end up with this. We've got negative 18. That's one of the values of C. The other value is going to end up being 12. So how does it work? Well, let's go ahead and plug them in. Negative 18 in for C. And then when I add the 3, you see I end up getting negative 15. And the absolute value of that is 15. Where if I plug in 12 in for C, I have in for the C there. So let's go ahead and write in 12 in place of that C, I add the 3, and I get the absolute value of 15, which is also 15. So you can see how negative 18 and 12 are the two solutions. So we can practice putting them in a roster notation, so they are in our solution set. So let's take a look at the next one, and it looks a little different because we have a fraction. Well, and also the absolute value is on the right-hand side of the equal sign. It doesn't really matter where it is. It still equals 2. So we can set that equal to positive 2. And I'm going to set it equal to negative 2. Putting the negative 2 on the left will show that, OK, that's where my negative side signs are typically when I'm looking at a number line. So that's why I decided to put them there. So I'm going to take 2 thirds from all of these numbers. So when I have the same sign, I end up adding. So that just makes negative 2 and 2 thirds. That's one of the values of m. But the other one I have to subtract. So really I have to borrow. So when I do that, I'm borrowing 2, or I'm borrowing 1 from the 2 and changing that to 3 thirds. And then I take the 2 thirds away from that. And you see how I end up getting 1 and 1 third. So those are my two values of m. And I'll just put them in a solution set in the roster notation. So let's take a look at the next one. It looks a little different because I got a number out in front of the absolute value bars. Well, it's being multiplied by the 3D. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to cancel out that multiplication. I'm going to divide by negative 2. And when I do that, I still have 3D inside some absolute value bars, but it now equals negative 2. And there's a problem. And where is that problem? Well, it's right here. You see, absolute value, no matter whether it be a negative number or a positive number, always equals a distance. And a distance is going to be a positive value. But I don't have that here. You see, I have an absolute value equaling a negative. Now, I can't use this rule until I get the absolute value bars isolated. That means get rid of this negative 2. And I did that by dividing by negative 2. And you see what happens? I've got it equal to a negative number. And I can't have that equal to a negative. So since the absolute value, absolute value can't equal a negative, then there are no solutions. 
So this is when you're going to say no solution. So no solution means that we can't come up with a value of d to make the statement true, and I can't come up with an absolute value that equals a negative. Well, let's take a look at the next one. This one, I have the same sort of thing, but watch what happens here when I divide by the negative 3. See, when I divide by negative 3, I still have that 2w inside some absolute value bars, but it now equals 2 because the two negative signs cancel each other out. And so that's going to end up being okay because we can now solve. So I set the absolute value of 2w equal to 2 and negative 2. And I go ahead and do the division. I divide by 2, and I end up with negative 1 is one of the values of w, and the other value is 1. So there it is, negative 1 and 1. The two numbers that I could put inside the absolute value bars here. And when I go ahead and multiply them by 2, I always get either 2 or negative 2. But the absolute value is 2. And when I multiply that by negative 3, I get negative 6 every time. So let's take a look at some other problems that we might see a little bit more difficult and challenging because they have more terms inside the absolute value bars. And looking at this first one, the 4 is outside the absolute value bar, so I'm going to divide by the 4. So I always try to isolate the absolute value bars, just like I isolate a number and or a variable when I'm trying to solve for it. So I now have v minus 5, absolute value of that equals 4. So I set the v minus 5 equal to 4 and negative 4, because those are the two values v can, or the v minus 5 can end up equaling to make 4 when I take its absolute value. So from that point, I can go ahead and add the 5 to all sides, noting that when they're opposite in sign, I end up having to subtract. So I end up with 1 is one of the values of v, the other value is 9. So 1 and 9 are the two solutions. Let's take a look at the next one. So here again, you're isolating the absolute values. So over here, I had to divide by the 4. Here, I'm going to add the 1. So now I have 3f plus 5 tenths equals 8. So I go ahead and solve a little further by doing some opposite operations. So I subtract the 5 tenths from all sides. It leaves me with 7 and 5 tenths equals 3f. So when I divide by the 3, well, 3 does go into 75. It goes into 7 5 tenths too, so let's see how many times. 3 goes into 7 2 times. And then I'll end up bringing down, or that goes in two times with one left over, so I'll bring that decimal point in there. And 3 goes into the 15 five times, so 2 and 5 tenths is the value of f. Now, that just is one side, so let's take a look at the other side. So that's one of the numbers, so I also have to subtract the 5 tenths from negative 8. And so when I end up doing that, I end up here with a negative 8 and 5 tenths. And so when I go ahead and do the division of 3, just like I did on the other side, 3, uh, let's see if it goes into this one. doesn't look like it's going to go into this one. 3 goes into 8. We have 2 times. And that leaves us with 2 left over. And it goes into 25. So I'll bring that decimal point down there. So this is a negative as well because I'm dividing a positive into a negative. And it goes into 25. 8 times makes 24. So let me actually write this out here. So I had 2 times makes 6. And it goes in there, uh, let's see, we said 8 times, it made 24. And then we have 1 left over, so it looks like that's going to be our repeating amount because we're going to end up with 3. And that's going to be 9, and we have 1 left over again, so 2.83 repeated. So we'll write that down, negative 2.83 repeated equals f, but we also have that equal to 2 and 5 tenths. So those are my two solutions in this case. So we'll write those down in the roster notation. So those are types of problems that you're going to end up seeing on tonight's homework. Good luck.